just a few things before we get started here. Um, you'll notice that there is a plus sign after the MGTO. I feel that needs a little bit of explanation. Well, um, you have your normal everyday MGTOs, and then you have what is referred to as MGTO Plus. MGTO Plus is your Sandman, um, uh, J. Todd, which is JTO, Deanna Davidson, uh, Barbarossa, Stardusk, those type of people. That's MGTO Plus. And we'll get into that a little more later. Another thing is, I want to be up front about this. I do not agree with Paul Elam when he says that a man who is married can be a MGTO. Uh, but I don't think it's that big of a deal if a man who is married calls himself a MGTO. It just, it's not that big a deal to me. I don't think he can be, but oh well, it doesn't. It's not that big a deal. We've got other things to worry about, more important things to worry about. So now that that stuff is out of the way, uh, let's get started with the main point of this video. Okay, uh, I'm not an MGTOW. I do not spend time on their forums or on their uh, YouTube channels or anything like that. I watch some of their videos. Um, I watch some of Barbarossa, Stardust, Sandman, J. Todd, and the rest. But I I'm a fan of uh, Vention. MGTOW. I like that guy. He's got a lot of good videos. Um, and some strange reason, he's the only one of those that I mentioned who do doesn't talk about women a whole lot. I think he's moved past uh, the whole let's uh, kick a dead horse until it's nothing but a bag of bones type. And he's gone on to bigger and better things, which I find very interesting. Uh, he seems like a happy guy. He's Seems like he's he's he enjoys his life and his lifestyle choice of being a MGTO. Uh, good for him. Another thing is um, I have no position of authority, any authority whatsoever, at A Voice for Men. I write articles that some of them are published on the websites, and I have a radio show on A Voice for Men Radio uh, along with Dan Perrins. However. The, you know, if, if, if ABFM had a fucking janitor, that person would have more authority there than I do, okay? So let's get that out of the way. I'm not speaking for anyone but myself here. And uh, as I said a while ago, there's a difference between MGTO and MGTO Plus. To the MGTO guys, I'm not really talking to you. I'm talking strictly to the MGTO Plus. Uh, the difference being that uh, MGTOs are guys who have decided that... Uh, because of our legal system, they choose not to marry. Uh, they choose not to get into that legal contract because of our legal system and the way that contract is set up. Also, they choose not to have children. Again, because of the legal consequences, that how the, our legal system is against fathers and against men when it comes to uh, family courts and uh, child support and all that sort of stuff, right? MGTO Plus is women are the problem. And that's your Stardust, Barbarossa, you know, anyway, like I said before, right? Okay, so MGTOs, you guys, I fully support uh, men going their own way, not marrying and not having children. Uh, I think it's a smart choice. It is a good idea to mitigate your risks, to lessen the, the legal, uh, uh, your, your chances of, of coming in contact with our legal system. Uh, the the farther you can stay away from that, the better off you are. So, you know, I support men going their own way. I think it's a good idea. Uh, I think uh, I would strongly advise any man in our current uh, culture to not get married and to not have children for those reasons. So I'm not against MGTO. I support it. But I am against uh, MGTO+. Plus. See, these MGTO Plus guys, they see women as the problem. Now, does that sound familiar? It should to anybody that studied feminism. You know, uh, feminism sees men as the problem and masculinity as the problem. 
MGTOW Plus sees women as the problem and femininity, specifically hypergamy, as the problem. Well, that's bullshit simply for the reason that we know that there are good women out there, the same as there are good men out there. See, the problem is not women or men, it's society as a whole. It's both. Uh, there are women in the men's human rights movement who can and do control their hypergamous instincts. They see men as human beings, not as disposable utilities. And there are women who um, have yet to come in contact with the men's human rights movement who are good, decent human beings. There are women who out there who control their hypergamous instincts. See, what MGTOWs and feminists don't realize is that we both, men and women, have basic instincts that are Neg or, uh, have, have a negative impact on our culture and on other human beings. Most of us learn to control those instincts. The problem with our society right now is that men, uh, our society requires men to control our instincts, but it encourages women to um, display hypergamous behavior, and that has a negative impact on, on men and children. That's the problem. See, it's, it's not that women are hypergamous. That's not the problem. The problem is that society does not force women to control their hypergamous instincts. The women that do control them do it out of the a some sort of uh, uh, belief in uh, um, acting and behaving honorably to other human beings. So, see, women can control it. There are many women who do control it. So the problem is not women, it's not that women are hypergamous, the problem is society. And of course, uh, that's the MRM's position, the, the, or MHRM, the Men's Human Rights Movement, that's our position, it's society as a whole is the problem. But feminism and MGTOW Plus see you know, men or women as the problem. Now, the MGTO Plus community seems to have two major problems with MHRM. One being that we let women into the movement. How dare we? How horrifying, right? Uh, another is, is that we let traditionalists in the movement. Ooh, scary, right? Okay. Um, we let women in the movement because we do not give a shit about what is between your legs as long as you are advocating for the rights of men and boys we do not fucking care about your skin color your sexual orientation your religious beliefs or like thereof uh, or if you have internal or external reproductive organs we don't care and MGTOW plus if you've got a problem with that you can all go fuck yourselves Okay. Uh, the second problem, the uh, traditionalists, the tradcons. Oh my God! How dare you let people in your movement who believe in traditional marriage? Uh, that uh, you know, a man, a woman together in one house with their children. You know, you know that th that kind of model that has been the foundation of our society for generations the the kind of model that um, has been proven to be the best place for children okay children do better and are and are an asset to our society instead of a drain on our society if they are born and raised in a a, a, a family a man and a woman right you know that sort of model uh, um, how dare we let those people who, who believe in that in, in our movement? I, I, yeah, well, I've got another tip for you on that. Um, we don't care about your uh, political beliefs, for example, a Democrat, Republican, um, Socialist, uh, Libertarian, whatever. As long as you're advocating for the rights of men and boys, uh, that other stuff, it, is, it doesn't matter as much. You know, uh, we can disagree, obviously on many of those uh, different political belief systems. But 
it's not as important as if you are advocating for the rights of men and boys. Now, A Voice for Men being the largest men's, um, uh, men's rights website has a list, and you can go find it on the uh, front page, uh, um, a list of uh, uh, grievances, if you will, a, a list of things that we think that needs to change. You don't have to agree with every single thing on that list. You don't have to agree with the same things that Paul Elam agrees with in order to be a men's human rights advocate. Um, you just have to agree with some of them. Now, granted, there are people who are um, who have their little pet projects that you know there are people who uh, they really focus on, let's say, circumcision, and other people focus on fathers' rights. Um, there are other people who focus on injustices in our education system, right? So there, there's people that specialize or have their little pet projects. But as long as you agree with at least some of them and you work towards those, hey, you're a men's rights advocate. Congratulations. If you are a traditional conservative as far as you believe that a man and a woman living in one home together is the best place for children, and if you believe that for your own personal life you want to be married, um, hey, more power to you. We're, we'd love to have you. Because, see, we, we also have gay people in our movement, you know, two men or two women living in a house together. Uh, we also have um, uh, your, your standard MGTOs who are, you know, forever bachelors, right, that, that uh, are simply going to live by themselves. So we have all sorts of people, but as long, or all that matters is that you are um, advocating for the rights of men and boys. And for the MGTO Plus community, if you don't like that, you can go fuck yourselves. We really don't care what you think. And, um, yeah, um... Now, more on the traditional conservatives. Um, there are people in the movement who live a traditional life. Not only are they married, the man is the primary breadwinner, the, the protector and provider, and the, man, the woman is the homemaker and uh, caregiver. These people, all that we ask of them in the men's human rights movement, all we ask of them is, okay, that is your chosen path. That's fine. But we expect you to realize that not everyone is going to want that. And you should be okay with other people who want to have different relationships. Or different, um, different life choices, different lifestyles, right? So as long as you say, hey, this is what I want, this is what I like, but you all can go do what you want, then we're fine. We're okay with you. You see, the men's human rights movement wants men to have choices. Those choices should be get married or not. If you get married, you should have, obviously, you and your partner should decide, do we have children or not? If we have children, who is going to stay home with the children? Uh, would it be the man or the woman, or will both of you take a part-time job and, uh, you know, kind of go back and forth on taking care of the children, or will both of you have a full-time job and you'll hire a babysitter? You know, there, there's a whole host of choices there. The men's human rights movement wants men to have, be able to make each one of those choices, and our job is to make sure that each one of those choices is legally safe for that man to make. Right now, it's not legally safe for a man to choose to get married. We want to change that because we want men to have choices. Okay. Now, MGD, MGTOW plus, MGTO plus does not want men to get married, period. And anyone who is a traditional conservative is their enemy. Does this sound familiar to anyone? Well, it should. Again, going back to feminism, feminism wants women to have choices, but only the choices that they agree with. 
for example, feminism is against a woman being able to make the choice of being a stay-at-home mother. No, 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 you can't do that, ladies, not according to feminist and feminism. Now, same side of that counterfeit coin, MGTO Plus does not want men to have, make the choice of being protector and provider for a wife and children. Um, let's just let's just look at that. Let's just look at an example. Let's say a man wants to be a doctor, right? Uh, doctors have very very tough schedules, right? Uh, you know, they spend a lot of hours at work and not a lot of time at home. You know, they get called in the middle of the night to come in to the hospital or whatever, right? Okay. <clears throat> um, what if this man wants to have children? Wants to have a family and children. Should he say, no, nope, sorry, I can't do that. I can't, I can't have, make that choice because of uh, hypergamy. Or should he be able to make that choice in a uh, society where the legal system does not punish him for making that choice? If he makes that choice, you know, doctors make a lot of money, right? What if he marries a woman and this woman decides, hey, I want to be a school teacher. You know, school teachers don't make a lot of money. Or I want to be a stay-at-home mother. And this guy marries this woman knowing that. What is wrong with that? Why should he be denied that choice? Well, he shouldn't. And it's the job of the men's human rights movement to make sure that those choices are there for him, to, to for him to pick which one he wants, and... Um, for those choices to be legally safe and it's the job of the men's human rights movement to tell people like MGTO Plus to go fuck off. Okay. So we see that uh, MGTO Plus, they don't like women being in the men's human rights movement and they don't like traditional conservatives being in the men's human rights movement. Okay, uh, MGTO Plus, guys, um, you know, Sandman, Barbarossa, uh, Stardust, J. Todd and all their followers. Do you really fucking think we're going to tell Karen Strong, a woman, no, we don't want you to be part of our movement because you have a pussy. Do you really fucking think we're going to do that? Uh, no. Sorry to burst your bubble, boys. Not going to happen. Karen is a great men's human rights advocate, and we are happy to have her. And it doesn't matter that she's female, okay? Um, do you think we're going to tell Suzanne McCarley? Now, Suzanne, it, she is uh, works behind the scenes there at ABFM. Uh, you see her in the comic section. Uh, she's done some work on the whole Polly Perrette thing that's uh, going down. Um, and uh, she works on, a, I think she's a moderator of one of the, of the or ABFM forums, I, I believe. I can't remember. Um, or moderator of the comment section. Something. Anyway. Guys, do you really think we're going to tell her to shove off? Now, she was in a traditional relationship. She was married and had children. Um, do you think we're going to tell her to, to, to shove off a woman who works very hard in the men's human rights movement, and in, uh, especially at abortion for men? No. You know, and I don't understand what is going through your fucking little pea brains to make you think that we would even consider doing that. You guys need to grow up. You really need to grow up. You, you guys really need to grow up and understand something, okay? MGTO is a great way to lessen your risk of being ending up in front of a judge and having your life ruined by some psychopathic bitch. But it's not a solution. If you think hiding in a closet is going to protect you, you're nuts. You're fucking nuts. Hiding is not going to do anything. Hiding in a closet and hoping that the monster doesn't get you is not going to solve the problems. Is, is going micto, is that going to stop you from being falsely accused of rape? Nope. Because you don't even have to, you don't have to have sex with a woman. You don't have to know the woman. You don't even ever, ever have to have met the woman in order for her to falsely accuse you of rape. All she's got to do is point the finger. So being MGTO is not going to solve that. Is it going to stop you from uh, being dragged into the family courts? Nope, it's not. There's lots of guys out there right now paying child support on children that aren't theirs to women they were never married to. 
So if you think this is actually going to accomplish anything, you're crazy. All it's going to do is lessen the risk. It's not going to completely do away with the risk. The only way to do away with this risk or to lessen it as far as humanly possible is to actually get off your ass and do something about it. Now you don't have to be, you don't have to join a voice for men and you know comment on every article. You don't have to write articles. You don't have to do a radio show. You don't have to make YouTube videos. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to donate money if you don't want to. This is not a you're for us or against us type of thing. No, 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 no. But if you are a MGTO and you really want this stuff to change. You need to do something. Now, a while ago I mentioned Vincent MGTOW. Yo, he's I don't consider him a men's rights advocate. I don't think he considers himself one. But you know what he's doing? He's donating a little bit of money each month to the Parsonage Foundation. You know what they're doing? They're working on a male form of birth control. Okay. That means you could have sex with a lot of women and not get them pregnant, even if you don't wear a condom. That is a invention is actually doing something. If you take the red pill and you know about all this stuff that is going on and your action, what you choose to do is to run away and hide, you're telling every other man on the face of this planet, fuck you, I don't give a damn about you, I don't give a damn about men and boys, I don't give a damn about anybody. I'm just going to run and hide and hope the monster doesn't get me. You can do that if you want. Again, this is not a you're either with us or against us type thing. But there's a lot of men in this world who aren't made like that. We see these boys suffering in our school system and we want to do something about it. We see the you know, the deaths, the infant babies who die or have their penis mutilated beyond the ability for it to function properly by circumcision, and we want to do something about it. And since we're doing something about it, and MGTO Plus, all you guys are doing is hiding in the closet like little bitches, uh, you just forfeited your right to have an opinion about the men's human rights movement and us take it seriously. You can have your opinion, but we're not going to take it seriously. Now, are women in the men's human rights movement, are they a cause for concern? No, no, not at all. Should they be scrutinized and watched and monitored? Absolutely, but no more than anyone else. You know, these guys, the MGTO Plus guys, want to bring up Willie Bumblebee and say, look what she did. Well, those dumbasses forget that Wooly, Bum Wooly Bumblebee's husband was right along beside of her doing the same damn thing. Yeah. So we watch everybody. <laughs> you know, a, a new person comes into the movement and starts uh, uh, wanting to do things and wanting to be active. We welcome them with open arms, but we keep an eye on them because we know what can happen. Just, you know, Wooly Bumblebee and her husband are a prime example. So in closing, um, we see that these MGTO guys are sharing some similarities with the ideology of feminism. Uh, there's one more that I'd like to bring up. Feminists don't want men to be a part of the family because they believe men and masculinity uh, is dangerous, is a danger to women and children. Um, MGTO Plus doesn't want men to be a part of the family because they believe femi or femininity and uh, women are a danger to men. Also, I'd like to bring up uh, one other point. You see, what's going on right now between the men's human rights movement and MGTO Plus is very similar to what happened a while back between uh, uh, the MRM uh, versus Bernard Chapin and Rock and Mr. E. You see, uh, uh, Bernard Chapin and Rock and Mr. E had a problem with liberals and uh, Democrats being in the uh, men's human rights movement. Now we see that uh, MGTO Plus has a pr problem with conservatives and uh, traditionalists and women being in the men's human rights movement. Uh, Bernard Chapin and Rock and Mystery were pushed aside in the men's human rights movement, continued on and continued to grow and prosper. And the same is going to happen here. 
MGTOW Plus will be pushed to the side and they will fade off into the into the mist, into the abyss. Now, for all the genuine, legitimate MGTOWs out there, I am not going to presume to tell you how you should run your organization, your movement, or whatever you choose to call it. I would not do that. However, it is my opinion that if I were a MGTO, I would seriously start to consider whether I would want to be associated with the guys in MGTO Plus. I think that you all would be better off if you were to push those guys to the side as well. Uh, you guys got a great thing going, and you don't need these dumbasses mucking up the works. Now, that's just my opinion. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, that's up to you. It's your organization, movement, whatever you choose to call it. Not mine. I'm not a part of it. But I have seen little groups of very vocal dumbasses bring down and destroy other organizations before. And I would hate to see that happen to the, uh, the, the MGTOW community. To all my fellow men's human rights advocates, uh, everyone from Paul Elam and Dean Esme on down to the average guy like myself, I have an opinion that I would like to share with all of you. I think that it is time for us to publicly kick the MGTO Plus community to the curb. It is time for us to publicly distance ourselves from these assholes. It's, it's time for a split. They have brought this on themselves as far as they are the ones pushing this, uh, this divide, this rift. They're the ones that have ha have uh, 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 caused all the ruckus by being bigoted towards people with different beliefs than themselves. And uh, I think it's time that we do what needs to be done, unfortunately, and tell them publicly to fuck off. So, um, yeah, guys, MGTO Plus, um, let's see, I'm going to try to name off the, uh, the major players as I see them. There, there could be more that I'm not, I'm not hitting on here, but, um, Spit Naz, uh, Stardust, Barbarossa, Sandman, Razorblade Candy, J Todd, all of you guys, um, you know, go fuck yourselves with a cactus. Oh, and have a nice day. <laughs>